Hi, in this video, I will introduce the term e-learning and personalized education. What is e-learning by the way? E-learning stands for electronic learning. So it's nothing but learning aided with electronics. For example, digital education or ICT that is nothing but information and communication technology in education. So this term is also used to refer something called networked learning or online learning. So this includes content dissemination via internet. That is just one way learning only for disseminating the content, right? And uh, structured contents, content dissemination and interaction via internet. That is two way learning both ways and all of the above plus the formal accreditation and certification that is called formal learning. So we now have got three modes of network learning. The first one is content dissemination via internet. That is only one way learning. It's also known as informal learning. You know just you disseminate the content now structured contents content dissemination plus interaction via internet that is two-way learning that is also known as non-formal learning now coming to the formal learning it's non-formal learning plus the accreditation and certification that is the formal learning so the three kinds of uh, learning things the most unassumed or overlooked component of these three kinds of learning is the non-formal learning so as uh, you might know already the exams raise the concept and the, the maximum parsimony or the principle of parsimony dictates that simple or non frill you know so uh, as you can see here all things being equal the simplest solution tends to be the best one so instead of going for unnecessary complications just stick with what is uh, the simplest solution so it's always better to go with a simple non frills a uh, free functional website spend as little time as possible with technicalities and site maintenance no dedicated supporting stuff necessary no software to be installed no paid web servers no financial requirements other than a PC with an internet access so it can also help you to promote a dialogue about the material that is two-way learning and open for all no registration required that is what this um, non-formal learning all about that is what I'm going to teach you today so the target is non-formal or alternative learning component of the lifelong learning which is often neglected so as you can see the lifelong learning has got three components informal learning non-formal learning and formal learning so this is the component which we are targeting so this non-formal learning has got structured course proper curriculum with learning objectives systematic assessment two-way learning but no formal certification or academic degrees uh, why would you need that because you already have a course running in your university or college and you are just fostering the education through the online mode so that is what this uh, non-formal uh, learning is all about so we should start with this non-formal learning even though you would like to go with a formal learning at a later stage for example if you would like to develop a full-fledged MOOC in a later stage it's always better to start with the non-formal learning that you can convert that into a full-fledged MOOC so the, the inspiration for this non-formal learning is nothing but goal oriented or curiosity driven alternative education so not exam or degree oriented or establishment driven so that means the students are mostly looking for the you know the exam right so the, the in the traditional system in the university or college students come just for the sake of getting a degree and uh, ultimately getting a job so that is not what the the you know the, the informal learning is all about informal learning is about uh, to uh, there's a goal for you and the, to, to achieve that goal one good example would be gurukula system of tension india or uchideshi in japan you know the samurai warriors or boy scouts or lynda.com it's a it's a very nice site uh, lynda has got lots of training videos for example i picked up uh, adobe illustrator skills through the lynda.com training video so all these are goal oriented or curiosity driven so uh, yet another term is discovery learning so usually this informal learning uh, as well as uh, the the, the side box method you know uh, which i'm going to introduce in this video uh, fosters something called discovery learning which is really important for higher education so discovery learning is to expose the students to the latest scholarly research for them to see the knowledge acquisition as an ongoing process and to witness the excitement of the knowledge discovery so extensively refer and discuss the latest episodes of the podcasts and latest issues of the popular science journals in the class to make it accessible through the site 
to incite the passion in people for choosing a research career. And uh, you can also awake their curiosity and desire to learn by explaining the benefit why they are learning. It's very important that you should explain them why they are learning a subject. So you can provide a classroom for equipping the students with the research skills like scientific methodology, logic, critical thinking and writing. And you can allow the students to study the resources at home and use a classroom for discussion about the subject, brainstorming and illuminating the concept. And this is exactly what you call it as flipped classroom concept. You know, and it works pretty well in higher education, might not be good for the school level, but good for higher education, uh, for especially for college and university faculties. So Google Sites is an unassuming powerhouse, but often overlooked. So this is our new Google Site logo. And academicians often resort to enterprise MOOC like Google Classroom or Moodle, Litmos, etc. for content dissemination. But once they realize the quantum of inevitable works, they often quit completely. Because all these things, for example, the Moodle needs knowledge of coding, dedicated web server, daily maintenance tasks, complicated design elements, modules, topics, announcement, etc. But in the case of Google Sites, you need nothing. So the solution, what I'm going to introduce is DYG solution. That is nothing but, it's like do it to yourself, DIY, right? Or DIY. So Dropbox, YouTube and Google Sites. So with these three things, you can design your own website, a fully fledged course site that fosters informal learning. You know, may not be a, a formal learning, but informal learning, which is pretty good to start with. You know, if you have zero uh, background with this online teaching or e-content dissemination, so this is very good starting point. So you need to have a website which is hosted at the Google site which is totally free server and it's very simple just like uh, you know how to create a Google Doc if you ever have an account with Facebook. How do you post a message in the Facebook? It's that simple. It's really simple. So you need a course contents like documents, PPT, PDF, Excel as stored in the Dropbox. It has got lots of advantage. Now videos, traditional black and white teaching plus annotated PPT presentations, you can store that in the YouTube. So annotated PPT means PPT slides with voice overlay, just like what you're listening right now. And course resource like podcast, popular science articles, scholarly publications, news, instructional videos, later MOOC, everything you can hyperlink respectively inside the Google sites. And it fosters two-way learning because there is an option for graded quiz through Google Forms web forum through Google Groups, group video chat by Google Meet, a group assignment through Google Docs, virtual whiteboard for the group mind map exercises by Google Drawings, an individual assignment submission by Dropbox file request, and usage statistics by Google Analytics, search function by the Google search, schedule or agenda by the Google Calendar, anonymous feedback again by the Google form. So it's mostly these are Google services plus Dropbox and the YouTube. So that is why it's called DYG solution. So as you can see, this is the website that I'm already having. So it's hosted in the cloud Google sites. Uh, this is my own website uh, for each page, uh, each course that I handle, I have my own uh, class websites. It's actually very simple. Anyone can do it. It can be edited from anywhere in the world. Even in Antarctica, I was part of the Indian Antarctic mission. So even from Bharati station and Maitri station, I used to edit my course website. So it's actually very simple. You really don't need to be a physically present in the university or college to edit it. And the editor is also Visvig editor. Visvig means what you see is what you get. Exactly like how you compose a, an email message. It's really simple. Uh, this is how it looks like. As you can see that this is a logo. You can design the logo. This logo I designed that in the uh, you know the Adobe Illustrator. So of course, if you really want to design a logo, that you know you need to take a complete course on how to use Adobe Illustrator. But you can just use anything for that purpose. And just put your title here and then this is nothing but collapsible text handler so all these are the control materials here you can insert for example a text box or you can embed a code image or drive and this is another uh, you know the, the tab called pages and the third tab here is the theme so this is how you actually publish it you know so you can simply hyperlink anything by using this uh, composer window 
so you can just click one click to embed the image google calendar youtube videos google docs google form google drawings everything you can embed inside the site just by double clicking and you can enter it or you can use this site navigation bar to insert text box or image or you know you can see that uh, youtube calendar map docs slides sheet everything you can include it very easily but not many people are aware of it you know it's actually very simple and it's extensively customizable sidebar navigation or the top bar it, it depends on your choice this bar i can also put that on the side you know and header theme so if you click on this uh, this icon this gear icon then this small window will come the settings window so navigation mode on the top or side here I can set a side if you want the navigation this one on the side you know and the color transparent I can make it in color as well it all depends upon the kind of theme you can also choose a theme here directly for example simple or aristotle or diplomat vision level impression so many themes are there uh, just one click the entire site will be custom customized for you so without any knowledge about the css or the html you see and the landing page you can set it with the bit.ly or any of the url shortener you see you can customize the the url so it's actually much easier rather than remembering a complicated uh, you know tiny url is another uh, uh, url shortener uh, so it's it's beneficial because rather than remembering a very complicated site uh, address which often prone for uh, typing errors when you enter manually you know so it's always better to have something like this felix lab it's very easy to remember bit.ly slash felix lab so, so bit.ly is my favorite url shortener because it also gives you a lot of interesting statistics you know you really don't need any pro account for it and this organization is also hierarchical uh, because I can actually put this in uh, you know inside for example for students inside this for students I can put lots of courses here so everything is arranged very nicely so that is what uh, it can also have announcement banner where students can see that message on the top of this or I can set it wherever I want it so lots of functionality that Google sites offer offers you so this is a, a course uh, I mean this is the classic site while the site that you see is a new Google site so th even the classic site is available right now you can do that using a classic site as well so this is you know each page or each course that I teach for example evolutionary biology I, I do have uh, a URL shortener with that so that students need not go all the way Google search my name click 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 so three four clicks they can avoid if they simply remember this site evoddivo bit.ly slash evoddivo so it's it's actually very simple and it also have supporting the web forum so anybody can ask me any questions so the moment they put a question i will be getting an email notification on my uh, mobile phone and i when i click reply so that reply will come here directly i really don't need to edit my website nothing so everything is automated and the conversations are threaded just like the gmail and responses are by the email and it's completely searchable you know so anyone has in, having that particular query they can search inside this uh, uh, google groups and this is how the course uh, page looks like and it is natively compatible across the devices operating systems and browsers all these browsers are being supported and of course you know you can see that uh, the same site this is a screenshot from my mobile phone and you can see every single thing here so entire course contents in one scrollable page this is really interesting rather than having lots of complicated modules you know that is how the traditional MOOCs are right lots of modules one after one no you really don't need that it's everything is in one page it's much more simpler and functional and no complicated sub page frames css modules etc that demand multiple clicks so it's it's always better you know remember oxam's razor concept of the philosophy so simplicity is always better and always preferable than complicated solutions and the course website you know there is also a, a hangout uh, thing so if the students are clicking on this one it will directly schedule the, the video chat with me you know it can they can directly interact with me through the google uh, thing so i put an announcement there so when exactly indian standard time at, from to two uh, you know if uh, somebody clicks on it it can actually comes to you to my mobile as a group video chat of course you can schedule this through the google meet as well because the google meet is now a lot more popular right and uh, uh, of course the uh, the course has got 
lots of course materials including PDF, PPT, Doc, XLS, everything is hosted in the Dropbox, you know, and the lectures are uh, in, in hosted in the YouTube. And of course, if you click on this one, it will directly go to the Dropbox and students can simply download it without having the Dropbox account. It doesn't ask for the sign in to the Dropbox account. They can directly download it. And why Dropbox? Because Dropbox have got static URL. So the moment you change your uh, PPT, for example, I just uh, made some mistake. I realized that I made a mistake, a spelling mistake, or I would like to update that to PPT, last year's PPT with new slides. And the moment I click Control S, everything is reflected in the cloud. You know, I really don't have to manually upload it, then take out the URL and update it in my site. Nothing is required. Everything is automated. The moment I click Control S or Save my new file, everything is updated. So that is the beauty of this PPT. It saves a ton of your time. So this is uh, extensive links to the peer reviewed literature and latest popular science articles. So this is, uh, I always do that. You know, I always update it at least once in few months I update it. And peer reviewed lecture handouts are provided here. So I also tend to publish my lecture handouts separately in a peer reviewed uh, journals. So then you can actually, for example, these are the some of the lecture handouts. I actually published that in resonance of the Springer. It's published by the Academy of Sciences. It's a well-respected journal. So you can, of course, you can also do that, you know, and uh, that I, that actually makes your lecture handouts, uh, the quality is much higher in that sense. It has been uh, passed through the independent peer review process. So it's, it's a, always a good idea to do that. And uh, there are a lot of quiz in my thing. So, for example, the, all these quizzes I have done through the Google Doc. And of course, with add-in uh, the Google Doc, you can uh, schedule, you know, schedule on and off. So, if you miss that video, you can have a look at my earlier video, how to enable the scheduled on and off of uh, the Google Doc. And no sign-in is required to attempt and submit the quiz. And one submitted answer key and grade will show instantaneously. So a lot of advantage using Google Forms for multiple choice questions as well as for the doc, you know, the, the descriptive kind of tests as well. So this, this is how the, the quiz looks like. Lots the, the entire score, all statistics are inbuilt with this Google Docs. Uh, and Google Forms and of course Google Forms if you click here it will go to the Google Sheet where you can directly uh, do a lot of survey if you're if you're doing a questionnaire survey for example you can analyze it in the Excel you know so a lot of advantage uh, it offers and assignment submission uh, you know you can actually do that for example this is a virtual whiteboard I made it by uh, by using uh, Google uh, drawings so it can create the central node and uh, you know you can create a central node and let students expand and interconnected conceptual nodes and no login is required to edit any of these things you know and uh, this is how to do that so you know so if you click here click here to edit so the moment you click this it will go to the google drawings and you can edit all these things so this is a, this is a conceptual mind map assignment you know and uh, some of these one uh, assignments so for example submit your assignment here so it's just one link the student will click at that link it will go to the Dropbox uh, you know so it will ask you to upload it so the moment you upload anything in this page you see this Felix boss is asking for the assignment so just have to drag and drop into this page so the moment you put anything here it will be automatically reflected inside my computer this is my computer you know so there is a folder called Dropbox folder has a subfolder called file request so everything will be coming inside that one so if uh, for example if I have like 500 or 1000 students I did have you know uh, my last MOOC course I had around 4500 students in my uh, Swaya MOOC so looking each and every assignment uh, individually it will take like months if not years you know so it is not practical if you have a huge uh, class even a hundred modest hundred students how much time you would need to waste for checking each of their uh, report for the plagiarism right so instead I have just one a folder with all my 5000 something students uh, assignment in it I just have to click and drag and drop into the Grammarly plagiarism checker of course you need to have a pro account in the, the Grammarly but you can use uh, Urkund or Turnitin I mean a lot of 
free softwares as well as uh, software provided by the Inflipnet, right? So, uh, well, Grammarly is my choice. So, what I do is that I simply drag and drop that into the Grammarly and it can check each of these 5000 assignment individually and send me the report and uh, you know a statistically summarized table so all these uh, can save a ton of your time you know and also of course uh, group assignment my choice is the google docs right and even for the individual submission i can still suggest you the google doc is also a very good option instead of going for the dropbox file request you know so the google uh, google docs is very good because you you know back and forth email exchange you can really uh, prevent it even this one is not through the email you know it's a uh, google uh, i mean the dropbox file request is also automated process you really don't need to uh, get the emails you don't really have to check or flood your email inbox with your students emails a submission of the manuscripts and of course the related resource whatever resource that you would like to link up uh, into the course website you can do that you know for example in my site if you go you can see that related general links to the related resources you know and uh, podcasts other MOOCs and other other stuff on uh, writing and PowerPoint how to improve your writing anything you would like you know time management for example or presentations everything you can put in your website for the benefit of your students and student feedback also you can incorporate into the site I did it using Google Forms it's actually very simple and uh, uh, Google Analytics is offering an excellent way to analyze your site who is actually accessing it for example the gender male and female and how long they stay and how many page visits uh, you know each day it's a uh, you know the time series data and also the geographical wherever uh, you know where these people are actually accessing my site all this information you can get if you have this Google Analytics enabled it's actually very simple to enable just one click so all these things are advantages of using Google Sites over an enterprise MOOC like Moodle or Google Classroom. So all these are complicated setup with need special training and workshop to use the instructors and students while DYG that is Dropbox then YouTube and Google which is a non-formal MOOC is simple non-frills uh, interface no training is required it's a dynamic website for this enterprise MOOC you need a registration but of course here you don't need any registration or no login is required it's not indexed with the search engine but this is indexed with the search engine and it's discoverable for example you can google my name Felix Bast and the first link is my website where you can see everything there and software installation dedicated web server UPS etc required if you host it in uh, your own server you see for example the, the uh, local power cut will have an uh, impact on your course but in this one nothing is required everything is uh, on the cloud you know local power failures have no impact and this is only for course content dissemination but but dyg that is uh, dropbox then you know youtube and google it actually takes a holistic approach one platform to disseminate research publications podcast etc and is ideal for higher education so it works like a blog in the case of mooc but DYG is a dynamic website and all contents are accessible anytime and can be used as a you know pre-class preparation as well there is a flip, flip classroom so and discovery learning it fosters it and no need uh, of course for the MOOC you need a special apps to work in the mobile but it works across the devices for MOOC you need uh, everyday maintenance dedicated supporting staff but for DYG you don't need anything and all local edits are automatically reflected online and teachers can manage all by herself and for MOOC you need efficient customization coding is essential but in the case of DYG it's Visivig editor and no coding knowledge is necessary and MOOC can be used as a formal MOOC but of course DYG cannot be used as a formal MOOC but it's a non-formal learning it just supplements and well it's a good starting point for eventual migration towards uh, the formal MOOC so DYG is not a platform to replace a full-fledged formal MOOC this one uh, you know the purpose is content dissemination to masses by facilitating non-formal or alternative learning it also complement the existing classroom teaching especially by facilitating uh, the discovery learning and flipped classroom you know so that is what it fosters so it's exactly that is 
uh, what the it makes it a lot more relevant in this period the COVID-19 lockdown period so we really need to foster the existing classroom teaching you would need to interact with your students so in that case DYG is a very good solution for it e-content development for DYG can be repurposed for MHRD Swayam at a later stage uh, which is a platform for formal learning in India you know the formal MOOCs the Swayam platform of course you can use your the material which you develop for the uh, you know the DYG or uh, any of your uh, non-formal MOOC things so a very famous quote which I love a lot is by Abraham Lincoln if I had six hours to chop down a tree I would spend first four hours sharpening the axe so you know if you sharpen a good axe then you can cut the, the you know the, the tree with the very less number of blows so preparation is the key so how do you create a, a simple course page using Google site? It's actually very simple. You just have to go to sites.google.com slash new and click the plus icon, the bottom right corner. So once you click it, you can simply design the logo. So the best option to design your own website is do it, you know, and learn it yourself. So instead of I preach you or, you know, I, I, I tell you the theory behind how the Google sites work. No, it doesn't work that way. Just start it. Just go to this uh, this page and create a site yourself and see how it, it turns out. So remember, whatever the changes that you make will not be published unless you press the publish icon on the top right side. You know, so on the top right, there is a blue icon called publish. So the moment you click publish, the site is on on the Internet and of course it's free you don't need to pay anything for the url now coming to personalized education what is this personalized education so you might have heard of this term personalized right so or th this is also known as adaptive learning so instead of one size fits for all or tailored pedagogy an individualized pedagogy framework fostering um, you know more teacher to student interactions so usually it is one size fits for all right you have a, a proper syllabus and you teach the same syllabus to everybody irrespective of the student right everybody starts with lesson number one then lesson number two three four five six like that right so you cannot simply the students have no option to choose the lessons in one course of course they can choose uh, some courses that is uh, you know the choice based credit system right so they just need to take the, the credit so in the new uh, UGC system but I'm not saying about that I'm saying about inside one course the lessons everything is tailor-made well you can compare the personalized education with private tutoring so private tutoring means that you you know you get a tutor to come to teach your kids at home and you of course it is not that cheap it's of course very expensive and then you will have you know the tutor will be interacting only with one student so the you know the tutor can actually see what is actually good and bad you know so which are the actually the uh, you know the strong uh, points of the students so which sections need uh, more and more preparation all these things are very evident uh, if you do this private tutoring so it can also compare that with the personalized medicine so instead of simply getting uh, you know the generic medicine it's better if you take your blood to test to see exactly where is the problem for example if you have a cancer you can get your genome sequenced or the SNP you know the SNPs that is basically the mutations and see what kind of mutation is actually happening in your uh, DNA molecules so based upon the mo mutations the doctor can prescribe this particular medicine is good for you instead of going with a generic medicine or any randomly chosen medicine they can prescribe you one particular medicine that is called personalized medicine so the same tactic for education is called personalized education so of course you can compare that with GRE or any kind of a CAT exam that is computerized adaptive testing so they use something called adaptive algorithm that it actually learns uh, based upon your trials you know for optimal presentation of the questions adapting knowledge landscape so it can adapt to the knowledge landscape of the students so in personalized education contents will be presented in the dashboard in an optimal manner identifying the specific weakness of the individual students so it's like a melange or railway announcement you know so by the way dashboard is the same thing that you use that you can see the dashboard in a car or you know the, the front part so in in an online learning 
in a MOOC for example you will see lots of contents coming right so these contents are adaptive you know it depends on how which student are learning so all the students will not have the same kind of dashboard in the case of personalized education so it's actually that the algorithm learns by itself so if the student is really weak then the dashboard will contains a lot more lessons on improving the weaker parts of the syllabus you know so that is how uh, the personal education is working so it's like railway announcement for example uh, if you go to the railway station it will say uh, you know the uh, uh, the train number after train number then the number will be different uh, from to all these things they actually change it right uh, so the same way they can actually uh, do this with the personalized education as well with the contents and adaptive instructional design that rationally and automatically customized based on the students prior knowledge and learning curve it can compare that with the Bayesian inference so Bayesian theorem is used to update the probability for a hypothesis as more evidence for all the information becomes available so many of these algorithm works on the Bayesian method so it's an application of artificial intelligence on the education so you can compare that with FET algorithm for time tabling uh, for example if you have limited number of classrooms and you you have parallel uh, sessions going on you can use this FET algorithm for optimal uh, you know uh, uh, class scheduling so it's also uh, an AI based solution it's free FET algorithm is free you can just google it we use that in our university FET algorithm you know so cognitive scaffolding is a term that we use so it's basically artificial intelligence creates a learning path or instructional strategy or cognitive path based on the each student's cognitive ability so basically each student will have its own ability some are really smart student they really don't need brush up with the basics while some other students are really poor with basics they really need to take up the you know the, the basic courses so exactly like a, how a private tutor can detect it these algorithms can also detect it that is a beauty and based upon what they detect they will present uh, the, the lessons on the dashboard so automation in instructional design for the optimum pedagogy is exactly what you call that the personalized education so level is neither too low or too high is just right you know so this is how the student will be presented with the contents an adaptive engine works with the learning and data and it actually goes to the prediction model because it also tests the background you know so knowledge information the, the model keeps on working so and this adaptive engine also works and to present an optimal dashboard design and it goes to the teachers and also suggestions all the way back to the students so it also helps the self-reflection of the students so uh, it can have flexible contents and tools, targeted instructions and uh, student reflection and ownership and data driven decisions. So uh, this is extremely important. All these components, the four components of the personalized education. So what are these components? The flexible contents and tools means instructional materials allow for differentiated path, pace and performance tasks. So it is not the same path for all the students it can it can be different based upon the individual students need and the instruction is targeted so instruction aligns to specific student needs and learning goals and student reflection ownership means ongoing student reflection promotes ownership of learning so that means the students are the one who is choosing what to study right and of course that uh, the algorithms will help you so basically the students really feel ownership of the course and the decisions are all data driven data driven means a lot of statistics is happening regression methods are using so frequent data collection informs instructional decisions and groupings so it's extremely important right so uh, if you come to the data driven decisions teacher consistently uses the data from multiple sources both online and offline to inform the instructional decisions of the individual students data teams meet regularly to analyze the students data and to make decisions about the individual needs of the students teacher uses data to provide immediate feedback to the students teacher and students consistently review the data together to identify the needs and teacher adjust the instruction accordingly teacher uses formative assessments on daily basis to inform the instruction so the lot of statistics going on data analysis going on so the contents are 
quite flexible the instructional materials allow for differentiated path pace and performance task so each student will have a different path different pace pace means you know some students can complete it much faster same course while weaker students might take more time you know and performance task so varying instructional materials including foundational adaptive highly customizable so it allows for the differentiation for path pace and performance tasks so a lot of customization is possible uh, when it comes to personalized education one example would be sana labs in sweden they are trying out lots of interesting uh, courses they actually designed based upon uh, this personalized education duolingo is another interesting app uh, it's it's an android as well as iphone app uh, it's a popular language learning app so you know so it's, it's more like a gamification of the the language learning so you know it actually goes so after basic one then goes to the phrases basic two three four four animals so it's step by step process it's just like the game video game and uh, definitely uh, you know it is not the same thing like it depends upon how you actually react so it is the, the algorithm is also self-learning uh, for designing the cognitive scaffolding you know it's very interesting method so adobe has got captivate so cp that captivate can also be used for designing this kind of personalized education though adobe captivate is not a free solution so is this only a buzzword no it is not a buzzword the personalized education so personalized education is expected to transform the digital learning landscape significantly within next decade so as it enables the students to define the goals prior hand and get structured personalized contents that self adapt during the course it's going to be the most significant tool in outcome based learning obl so as india is a signatory for washington according 2014 of the outcome based learning personalized learning is substantially relevant here in india so how the dyg the one the solution which i taught you a while ago that is the dropbox youtube and google can be used for personalized education dyg is for content dissemination and two-way learning so it also fosters a flipped classroom right because you are giving the contents and you are converting the classroom for discussions and interactions so as the students watch the lecture and access resources at home classroom is used for group discussions and student teacher interactions and activities so it's not exactly an ai mediated automated personalized education but flipped classrooms do foster a lot more student teacher interactions enabling the teacher to identify specific weakness of the students and individualizing the education so in one sense this solution the dyg do foster the personalized education thank you for watching this video if you like this video please click thumbs up share it in relevant groups and subscribe to my channel see you soon in my next video